But we're going to talk some Forex. We're going to talk some commodities as we do every 40, every Wednesday at 40 past the hour. Folks, come on over to the front page of TFNN under the newsletter tab. You can see Teddy Cakestats, Tiger Forex Report. He's got new issues every week, updates throughout the week when warranted. You can check that out for $97. Comes with a 30-day money-back guarantee. We get some action in commodities today uh, and currencies, excuse me. And don't forget, he's got some awesome webinars out there. He's got Capitalizing on Time with Calendar Stock Option Spread with Teddy Kegstad and Japanese candlestick pattern stock and option strategies with our man Teddy. Go over there, check out the Tiger Dollar sale. Use those Tiger Dollars to sign up for some newsletters, maybe some webinars in the process. And yeah, we got some action in this market. Good morning, Teddy. Good morning, Tommy. Yes, we do. So we got a, a few different areas we could touch on. How about the dollar yen? Can we kick it off there? I know it's not the sure. driving force in all the markets, but we got some movement today, man. Um, really pulling back from some of those price levels. Caught my eye this morning, and I just wanted to get your take. I know we got a bunch of gold bugs, of course, in the den. And um, that dollar yen, important to the dollar index, important to gold, of course. But it's quite a move. I got it up on the daily, man. Quite a break from where we were, almost 162 at one point. We're now trading at 153 in that dollar yen. What do you think about the action, man? I think that's one of the biggest extremes you have, this moving the dollar right now. Uh, you have not as much volatility in the euro or the pound. If you look at the range and where we're trading at, I mean, yesterday we were trading above 156, and now we're at 150, just under 153 half, 153.40, or 60 rather. Um, it's, quite a, it's quite a move over the past couple of days without any real um, economic reasons or numbers to go by. Uh, I would say that crude may have some of the influence that's going on with it. Um, not that much, but I think it does have some bearing on it. Uh, the dollar it has, you know, um, it's it is in a corrective mode right now. So we had it had a nice rally, and I think now what you're seeing is is b because you have the extremes going on in the currencies, like you have more a a volatility in the yen and the Aussie and the New Zealand dollar than you do in m more of the major pairs like the euro and the pound. The Swiss is also unwinding as well, and I think that's where you're getting a lot of this dollar weakness in these currencies because those were, are the ones that haven't been really stretching very much. And so as far as the range, they have the biggest move. Like if you look at the euro, what, it, what it's done in the past week and a half from high to low to the bounce off today's low, it's volatility. You're looking at 115 pits. So that's a dollar 15. If you go and look at the yen now over the past, you know, go back just even to a week and a half ago, you're up at 158, you know, almost 159. Now we're at 153. You know, that's a big move, you know, and I think that it's it's key that the lows that we've been prodding on, um, we're heading right above where I have a critical short term correction band. Remember that this market is in a bull trend. We've been riding the highs, you know, so I, I think this is more of an exacerbated profit taking move. And I think it's very sensitive to bouncing very fast, like a balloon underwater kind of rally. Like markets directly don't always have direct reflections, but if you look at how the market markets tend to go in like they or go out like they come in. This market's coming in very steeply. So if if we were to have an extreme bounce in crude or a big uptick in yields, I could see that the, you could see the yen rally four or five bucks over the course of a day or two. You know, so I'd be careful selling it in the hole where it's at right now if you're short. I'd be looking to take profits, maybe even a little bit lower, maybe keep your stops a little tight over maybe the high of the two sessions ago on Monday, and then work it down from there and see if you can maybe get it down to 152 even. I would be very cautious, though, at that 152 even level. If we get below it, I mean, 150 even has been that Bank of Japan threshold level. They would love to see the U.S. dollar yen below that. I don't see it happening, though, as far as any of the other, you know, um, fundamental and technical factors. So, yeah, I think we're, this is a great market to kick off the uh, uh, talk today, uh, without a doubt. Oof. But uh, it's, it's very bearish pressure is there. You can, it's obvious on the charts. But we're coming into a very strong support band where we can see a grind of a trade. We could basically drop another buck, buck and a half, and then trade in a one to two dollar range for a week or so, you know, before we figure out whether it goes up or down, you know. And I think that crude is definitely definitely helping it. Um, but like I said, if that gets a, a nice uptick of three, four bucks, and then especially if yields, you know, get an uptick, then I'd say be care very careful with being short the U.S. dollar yen. Great takes, man. I appreciate it. And yeah, it was pretty remarkable. As you were talking about it, I was looking at that dollar yen, of course, I was looking at it on the short term, the move it's had the last couple of days, I took it a look at it on the daily. And then it is remarkable how that 150 area 
you know, you put this back on going back a couple years. We had the high, of course, late in 2022, basically touched 150 on the dot. You had the high of late 2023, touched 150 on the dot, and then kaboom, we get up to 162. Pretty stratospheric levels, and it will be interesting to see what happens if we come back down to that kind of area. As you mentioned, Bank of Japan, they'd like that area to be the threshold. We got pretty far above it. Um, we'll see how it reacts as we come back down to that kind of critical area. Pretty interesting. What else do we look at? You, you you touched on a few of those different. I mean, what do you think? I guess you know, we have a Fed meeting coming a week from today. Rates, of course, mm -hmm. all in focus. September is in focus. We get the Fed's preferred inflation gauge coming on on Friday. Um, how are you looking at this market through the lens of of where the Fed may be? You've given us some great takes in in you know prior appearances on this program, but you know the Fed seems to be in focus. And boy, the market has shifted yet again. With the current sure. theme being that rates are coming and they're current, coming at a ferocious pace, it seems like. What's your, what's your take on that? Sure, that's a great question. Uh, I would say as far as how you're going to trade the next uh, week going into that Fed meeting, uh, we have a number that's coming out today um, in a couple minutes. Uh, the S&P Global Flash, whatever. I don't think that's going to really do anything. Um, tomorrow we have jobless claims. That's it for the rest of the week for us. There's no real major numbers coming out until next week on the 29th, which is the German retail sales and also the Japanese unemployment rate. Those are marginal numbers in front of the Fed number. Uh, probably not gonna do much. Um, I think until we get to jobless claims after the Fed, that's probably, we are not gonna see any fundamental numbers acting on the markets, okay? So that means I would expect that you're probably gonna see a drying up of the currency and interest rate trade from Friday, um, probably around nine o'clock in the morning, Central Standard Time going all the way into uh, the uh, meeting on Wednesday. I would expect maybe some volatility on Monday morning briefly. You know, we'll probably start overnight in the currencies. If they get a move, then maybe we'll see some action in the very beginning of the morning. And once again, I would say that every day around nine, 10 o'clock Central Standard Time on Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, I'd be very cautious trading from that till the rest of the afternoon because you're probably not going to get any follow through on any move. You know, and not unless there's some big shakeup um, that's newsworthy and it's not going to come fun from any fundamentals coming out of the economics of the, of the economy. That's not going to come. So unless there's some global shift, like if all of a sudden there's peace in the Middle East or in the Ukraine, which I really don't think is going to happen. Oh, um, right. I know. I don't, I, you know, that would that would cause some volatility, I'm sure. Uh, but it's, you know, I would say be very cautious moving into the, uh, the number. And as far as what they're going to do, I don't think they're going to touch rates um, just because we've had, you know, some of the numbers are like, you know, there's over to pay past two months are saying, oh, this is great, and we're showing inflation is slowing, but year over year, those numbers are actually worse. They're looking at a month over month, one month in a row. So just keep that in mind. We live in interesting times, as they say. Yep. Teddy, I appreciate it, man. Great information as usual. We look forward to talking to you next Wednesday. Sounds good, Tommy. Take care. Have a great one. Folks, stay tuned. We'll be right back. Finish up the show.